Welcome to ATZ CAD. My name is David Atkins. In last week's episode, we covered how to make a basic block. If you missed it, you can find it in the card on the screen or in the description below. What we didn't cover was how to add editable text to a block definition. This can be used with any block that you make and is often used for keynotes, drawing callouts, and title blocks. Editable text inside of a block is called an attribute. It's super useful. It allows you to preset the size, font, position, and justification for text that you can later edit without exploding the block itself. Attributes come in many flavors, and we'll be discussing them all in today's episode. So let's get started. When you first insert an attribute-based block, a dialog pops up and allows you to set what you want the attributes to say, depending on the settings you used when you made them in the first place. You type in the text you want, go to the next option if there is one. For multi-line text, you can click on the three dots and edit them on the main drawing. Click OK and go to the next option if there is one. It's nice and straightforward. Editing a block is as simple as double-clicking on it. A different editing box pops up that lets you change the value assigned to the different attributes in the block. You can also modify size, font, color, and other settings in the other tab if you need to make something a little different. Just like making a regular block, we need to start with the geometry that we want to include. You also need to think about if you want the block to be annotative or not, if it scales itself or not, before you get started. We covered making annotated blocks in the previous video, so if you need a more in-depth dive into those, you might want to check that one out. For this example, we're intending to create a keynote block. This block will have a single piece of text that will hold up to two numbers or characters. It will be annotative, so we can use it in model space and in paper space. Ideally, you'd be starting in a new drawing using your normal template that already has the layers that you want and the textile you're planning on using. Like any block, you can also make it in any drawing you want to make it in. But again, it's important to have your layers and textiles defined before you start. Since this block is going to be annotative, we need to set our annotation scale to 1 to 1. I plan on placing this block exclusively on a layer called Keynote, so I'll make certain that I have that layer created and that it's the current layer. We're going to go to the Insert tab and start the Define Attribute command. While there are a lot of options here, for now we only need to concern ourselves with just a few. The first thing we need to set is the tag. The tag is what AutoCAD will call the attribute internally. It can be whatever you want it to be, but it can only be one word, so it can't have any spaces. I'm going to call this one Note. The next thing we need is the prompt. This is what the user will see when placing or editing the block. It should be descriptive and sound like a human wrote it. Which is why I had ChatGPT write it for me. Because why write three words when I can type two full paragraphs and get AI to write those three words for me? Finally, we need to decide if we want a default value. For this, I'm going to type two X's. I could also leave it blank, type one, or literally anything else. Whatever I place here is what will be pre-filled when I place the block. Before we click OK, we need to adjust the text settings. Here, we will pick the text style that we want, set a size if the style doesn't have one already, and set the justification. I'm going with middle center, so it'll be super easy to draw the circle in the right place. Also, because I'm making the whole block annotative, I don't need to make the text annotative. The block will handle that for me just fine. I really don't care about anything else. The default options you see in the upper left are perfectly fine. You should probably check to make sure your settings match these just in case. We'll do other examples that explain those options later. Click OK and place the attribute. Now that I have my attribute placed, I can draw my circle. I'm going to use the insertion O snap to make sure the center of the circle is placed at the center of the text. I'll eyeball the radius to make sure it's big enough to hold two letters, and click to finish that. Finally, we need to turn the circle and the attribute into a block. Since this is going to be annotative, we must use the create block command. We've covered making annotative blocks in our last episode, so I'll do it relatively quickly. Name the block, pick a base point, select the objects, and make sure annotative is checked, and click OK. Since I had convert to block selected, we're pretty much done. We can test it a couple of times and call it a day. Adding multiple attributes to a block is very much the same, so let's up the complexity a bit, shall we? Here we have a default title block, one that comes with AutoCAD. 
The default title blocks expect you to type in the drawing information using regular text, like a caveman, and we don't have time for that mess. We're going to edit this existing block and add attributes to it. To edit a block, you can click once on it, right click, and choose Edit Block. This opens up the block editing environment, which is signified by the gray background. Feel free to close the palette that opens up. This is for defining dynamic blocks, and we won't be doing that today. Let's start with the sheet number. Once again, we'll start the Define Attributes dialog and define the tag prompt and a default value. I like to use a default value that lets a user know how we normally name sheets. Some people name it 1, 2, 3. Some name it 1.1, 1.2. Some name it after their favorite Pokemon. Okay, no one actually does that, but you do you. The idea is to give your users a clue on what should normally be there. We're going to set our text style and not really worry about the size at this time. Title block text is a bit different from note text as we aren't generally as worried about the specific size and can use the scale command to get things to fit. Again, I'm going to choose middle center and click OK. I'll move the new attribute to the center of the proper area in the title block. I'll use the scale command to get it sized well, and that attribute is finished. For items like project number, date, and scale, we do much the same thing. Start the define attribute command. Give it a tag, a prompt, and a default value if you wish. I'm going to use write justification for this attribute. Click OK, move it to the right place, and scale if need be. Since the other two have the same text size and justification, I can copy this one to the next location. Having copied it, I can double click on one and change the tag and other information to match the new content that I want. For the sheet title, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Starting the same command, I'm going to make this attribute multi-line by checking the box here on the left. This will let me place an mText based attribute instead of the normal single line text. The rest of the process, until you press OK, is similar. Now I'll move, rotate, and scale it like before. There are of course a ton of other attributes that you might want to place on a title block. I'm going to fast forward through the rest because all the steps are the same. I will note that any of these attributes could be fields as well. Setting the date section to the current date field could be appropriate depending on how your company dates their drawings, so keep that idea handy. I also have another video in the pipeline for automatically populating title blocks from the drawing settings, which can be super handy if you typically have multiple layouts. Hit subscribe so you don't miss that one. With all of this done, it's time to hit the green checkbox, save the new block definition, and try it out. Sadly, this doesn't work immediately. If we had made the title block from scratch, then everything would be fine. But we edited an existing block. This requires an extra step. Whenever you're editing a block with attributes, or adding attributes to an existing block, we need to let AutoCAD know that these attributes have changed. This is called synchronizing the block. The synchronize command is hidden away in the flyout in the block panel on the insert tab. You'll want to click the command, choose select from the on-screen menu, and then click on the block you want to synchronize. Don't forget this step. Anytime you edit an attribute-based block's definition, you must synchronize the block afterward, or you'll be sad. We can now double-click on the title block and test it out. All of our attributes are here, but they're in a random order. I'm sure it would be nice if they were organized better, wouldn't it? In the Insert tab in the ribbon, you'll find the command Manage Attributes. This will let you change various properties of all the attributes in your block. In this case, we want to make sure our title block is selected. We can see the list of attributes in the block, and we can change the order of the attributes using the Move Up or Move Down options. When you have it ordered in a way that makes sense for you, click OK. Now we need to synchronize the block one more time, which we can do directly in the dialog, and we're done. In the upper left-hand corner of the Attribute Definition dialog, you'll see several checkboxes that are occasionally helpful. Invisible is used for attributes that you don't want to show up on the screen. How is this helpful? Well, if you see my video on linking Excel and AutoCAD, you saw the section on data extraction. You can assign things like model numbers or pricing or SKUs to a block, not have them show up on the print, 
but be able to write the attribute values to a spreadsheet. This is useful if you want to automate making bill of material tables or extra data like this. I like to make sure I say somewhere in the prompt that this data is invisible so it doesn't confuse a user. Constant is used for attributes that you never want to change. This will be filled in with whatever default value that you set, but a way to change them won't show up when you place or edit the attribute. For most cases, regular text will do this task just fine. But for using data that you want to use data extraction with, having an unalterable attribute can make this data easier to grab. Verify is an option that will make you enter the data twice. Like when you need to enter your email twice or password twice, this will let you know if you didn't type in the same thing in both fields. I've never really needed to do this, but if you're getting bad data due to typos, it's definitely something that you can use to help prevent that. Preset is similar to constant. You'll need to set a default value to use it. When you place the block, it won't ask you for this entry and will use the default value. However, unlike constant, if you double click on the block to edit the attributes, it will allow you to change it then. So for instance, if you're the only CAD person at your company, you can set the drawn by to preset, so it never asks you when you use the block, but you can still change it after if you need to. I almost always have lock position checked because I don't want my attributes to be moved. But if you uncheck this, then you can move them around, very much like you can when making a block dynamic. For things like the GFCI note for a receptacle, this can be a useful item to uncheck. Finally, we have multiple lines, which we've already played with. Down below, we have an option of placing new attributes below the last attribute that you placed. This automates the location of the next attribute and can be useful in some instances, especially useful for multiple attributes you might define for component information. Finally, when would you make an attribute annotative? We skipped that for the keynote block that we made, and it still performed fine. You would make an attribute annotative when you want the text to scale, but not the rest of the block. Here we have a 2x4 light fixture. Since the light is real sized, we don't want the light itself to scale, but we do want the text to scale. This is when we'd want to make sure to set the attribute to annotative, but not the block itself. Making this light fixture note annotative and unlocking the position gives me a light fixture block that keeps the text size correct while letting me move it around if it's in a bad place. Creating attribute based blocks makes dealing with text a lot easier since you can focus on the content of the text and none of the settings of that text. The block you create can also be assigned to M leaders to create your own custom callouts. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a video on how to make that work. Now that we've covered how to make standard blocks and attribute blocks, we now have enough information for the next episode in the AutoLisp series. AutoCount Part 2 will add blocks to the AutoCount command, as well as adding some command line options to the routine to make it more professional and easier to use. If you've been following along with that series, you won't want to miss it. So hit subscribe and maybe the bell icon so you know the day it comes out. Hitting the like button is what gives me that hit of sweet dopamine that keeps me going. If you have any questions or a particular topic you'd like us to cover, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.